Hey everybody, thanks for uh, tuning into this video. Uh, just a reminder, this is the A version of the Quest. Uh, the B version will just have slightly different numbers. Um, here we go. So we're gonna decide whether this ordered pair is a solution to this equation. Now this word solution is a uh, has a particular meaning when it comes to equations. Okay, So an equation has a solution if that solution makes the equation true. So let's look at a simple equation. Um, x plus 1 equals 4. Well, x equals 3 is the solution to this equation because if I put in 3, it works. Right? And that works for any equation. Like The test for if this is a solution is to plug it in and see if it works. Okay. So the same is true even if we're going to uh, have multiple variables. So here's our x, we all know that's x and that's y. So if this is x, if x is 6, okay, and y is negative 2, so we're going to have a minus 2. If that comes out, if that makes it so that both sides of this equation are equal, then that is a solution. 12 minus 2. Does that equal 10? Well, 12 minus 2 is 10, and that is equal to 10, so this is true. So yes is the answer. Now, if you just put yes and there's nothing written here, you may have just done it in your head. I'm completely confident in everybody's ability to do this in their head, but I don't know if you just guessed or not. So that might be why you didn't get full credit on a question like that, uh, even if you just said yes. Um, OK, so find the value of this guy here so that the slope is 15 halves. Uh, we know that to find the slope, which is the change in y over the change in x, a lot of you are going to find that, not a lot, but some of you are going to find that the uh, mistakes you were making with slope were that you were switching delta x and delta y. This is the change in y over the change in x. Okay, So when I want to find the change in y, I need to find the difference in two y values. right? We often call this y2 and this y1. And this, we find a difference in two x values, x2 and x1. Uh, which one we call y2 and y1? It doesn't matter. Just as long as if this is y2, this is x2. And if this is y1, this is x1. Okay. So if we take 9 minus that y value that's missing over negative 2 minus negative 4, it needs to come out to be 15 over 2. Uh, well, let's clean this up a bit. We have 9 minus y over negative 2 plus 4 is 2. Well, there's the 2. Right? It's a positive 2. This should come out to be positive 15 halves, so this should be a positive 15. So what does y need to be so that we get a positive 15? You can use your intuition, right? Um, or we could say, like, we could write an equation. 9 minus y needs to be equal to 15 in order for all of this to work out. And then we just solve for y. Uh, we could subtract 9, negative y equals 6, divide by negative 1, and y equals negative 6. So one person uh, who just solved it beautifully just set up 9 minus y over negative 2 minus negative 4 equals 15 over 2. Right, and got 9 minus y over 2 equals 15 over 2 multiplied by 2 on both sides just did it just just beautifully and then but we just got to 9 minus y equals 15 just like we did here we just kind of use some intuition here we actually use full-on algebra and found the same thing y is negative 6. Um, in 1995 a company had profit of $159,000 in 2003 they had a profit of 291,000 if the product profit increased by the same amount each year find the rate of change of the company's profit in dollars per year, right? So um, I didn't see this a lot, but one mistake was just kind of assuming that they started at $0 profit in 1995, right? And that they saw an increase of $291,000 from 95 to 2003 in eight years. But that's not the case, right? Their profit went from 159000 to 291000 right? So how much did it increase over that entire time, well, it ended at 291,000. It started at 159,000. So that is a change of 291,000 minus 159,000. 
132,000. Now that's not per year, that's over the total number of years, that's over eight years, which we'll get if we take 2003 minus 1995, we'll find a difference of eight, right? So this many dollars over eight years, but it asks per year, per one year is what it's saying there. Well, if it was 132,000 in eight years, then every year, if they saw a steady increase, uh, that's the, the increase per year. It's hard to, uh, to put more plainly than that. So the 132,000 happened over eight years. So if you divide that 132,000 up equally among all of those eight years, every year we saw $16,500 of increase. $16,500 per year. Did you hear from Williams? So uh, to sum up, we got to kind of a long pause in between those two things. Uh, $16,500 every year is how much the profit increased uh, as it steadily rose from $159,000 up to $291,000. All right, uh, next page. Here we go. We're going to graph this guy here. Uh, a couple different ways to think about this. We could think of it in the, uh, the quote, slow or fast. Okay, fast just being, we kind of use a little shortcut, right? Just kind of, we get fast because we did the slow way so many times. Uh, so the slow way would be, um, you know, I'm gonna find two points. And we've practiced this so many times, we know that one of the easiest points to find, or I would say the easiest point to find, is when we plug in zero for x. And we get y is just the leftover right there, right, four. So we have the point zero, four, really fast, really easy to find, all right? We needed a second point to graph this line, right? It's a line, so we know we need two points. So what x value shall we use then? It's uh, different for every, every uh, line, but this one has a fraction negative 1 third. So if we choose to plug in 3, then we'll cancel the denominator of 3. To use a term I don't really like, cancel. Um, but the 3 divides the 3, leaving a 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, plus 4, we get 3. So we just plugged in 3, we got out 3, there we go, 3, 3. And grab our line tool, throw down a little line, and looking good. The fast way is just noting the uh, how the, the slow way goes and, and how we can just kind of speed that up, right? It's, it's just kind of like doing this in our heads. Instead of writing all this down, we say zero goes in for x, what am I gonna get? That's zero plus four, we're gonna get four. That's pretty obvious, right? Throw that down. And then we follow this slope. Because we know that if we, if we do plug in three, if we do go to the right three from here, we're just gonna start going down from there. How much? We're gonna go down one. Go to the right three, down one. Okay, talked about that in class, doing it the, quote, fast way, following the y-intercept and the slope, right? Slope of negative one-third. So we just go, uh, we just kind of go over three and down one, and there's our other point. Now we have two points, and we can graph it. So whether we do it the long way, the slow way, plugging in zero, right, and then uh, plugging in three and finding those two points and plotting them and drawing a line, or saying, all right, there's my y-intercept, my slope is going to be going to the right three and down one, or even to the left three, that's a negative, and up one, which uh, clearly my line is not the best because it does not go through that point, but it should. Um, either way you choose, perfectly good ways to go. We're gonna find the slope here, right? The slope is how much of a vertical change we have over the horizontal change. How do we find the, the vertical change? Well. The y values here, those are vertical values, right? So how much does it change from one point to the next? Well, it changes five, right? Six minus one is five. Then we have this x2 and x1. How much does it change horizontally? It, start, it, uh, it ends up at three, it started at one. Three minus one is two, so the slope is five halves. Uh, we're going to find the slope again, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, negative 8 minus 7 over 3 minus 0. So negative 15 over 3, which simplifies to negative 5.
here. I'm going to do actually the, the B version of this as well. First, let me acknowledge this says money here. It shouldn't say money. I thought it was going to, you know, the, I click a little button, it changes things around, it changes the words, it changes the graph and stuff like that. And I thought I would change this from money to water to distance depending on the situation, but it didn't. So uh, I've since taken that out and that's not there anymore. But if it, if it did read appropriately, it would say like a water level or something like that, or amount of water. Um, so this is a graph of, uh, of the amount of water in Denzel's glass over time. So what's going on here? Well, if this is the water level, it's increasing over time. So it's going up, right? There's more, right? The level is higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. It's filling up, right? So something like it's filling up. Some of you got creative and I liked it. You know, he's, he's turned on the faucet uh, all the way on uh, and then he uh, tightens the faucet a little bit because let's see why that happens. Tightens faucet. Or I saw the faucet gets clogged or uh, things like that. Or just put in a little ice. That's kind of kind of creative there, right? Because right here, it, it, I don't think it's that um, hard to see that there is a slight slant to this guy here. Uh, it's the way, it's the nature of pixels and computers and printers. Uh, you can see how it's slightly jagged, which means that the printer had to switch the, the line that it was printing on to, to print this slightly slanted line. And this part is just perfectly horizontal. So um, with this just being slightly slanted, it's still increasing. The amount of water is still increasing just more slowly, right? Just uh, dripping in there or, um, you know, the, it gets clogged or we just put a little water in there, like a little uh, ice cubes, right? Which just brings up the, the water level just a little bit. And that's all, you know, good and creative. Then uh, no change is what we really want to see. Something that reflects that you understand there's no change. He, you know, leaves it on the countertop. He walks out of the room. He puts it down to fix the faucet. I saw a lot of that stuff. Like just no water is going in or coming out, right? And then he drinks some of that water, right? The amount of water is decreasing, okay? And the only other thing here, aside from seeing that, that you understand that it's filling up, filling up more slowly, right? Just slowly is what I want to, to, to see there. No change, stops drinking, stops filling, nothing's happening, and then drinks, the amount of water is going out. Okay, or so one person said that he spilled the water. Fine, well, the water comes out, so that's very good. Um, what I wanted to see here is that you focus on the total amount of water from beginning to end. From the beginning to the end, how much did it change? And just a small note, some of you said like it started out empty. I don't know, that graph doesn't look like this glass is empty. If there was a glass of water sitting here, Empty would be here, but some full would be right there. And that's where it starts. It starts off right there. And then it goes up to be about that full, and then about that full, just a little bit more full. And then it stays there, and then it goes back down. How much does it go down? I wanted to see that you said something like, you know, it came back down to almost where it was to start with. Right? He filled it up a little bit, he drank some water, and to me it looks like maybe it stopped right there, just a little bit more full than it was. If you said it went back to the same, that, that's fine. But I wanted to see that you said that it either went up a little, right? Something about increasing a little bit, or maybe even just stayed the same. You know, it, it went up to a certain amount, it came down, and it, where it ended was just about the same as where it started. Okay, so you see the change, the rate of change, right? It's pretty steep, so it's changing fast. It's not very steep, so it's not changing very fast. But also, the y value of it is how much is in the glass at any time. Okay. So here it's full, and it's just as full now, and it's just as full now. It's as full as it can be, or the, the, as full as it is over this uh, interval. And then it's getting less full and less full and less full. Number eight. I don't know if anybody got this wrong. It was a lot of people caught on to this, right? So we've got an amount of money 
is equal to a $20, right? Just one time we pay $20, plus two times the number of rides that we go on. So that was pretty good. So maybe, I, I did see like a specific amount put here, like $70, not sure where that came from, but you don't need a specific amount. This it changes, as the number of rides changes, this uh, total amount of money can change. So we can just leave it as variables. Um, we're going to see if these are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. If they're parallel, they have the same slope. Remember, if they're perpendicular, they have opposite reciprocal slopes. I'm just going to shorten that up. Some of you say uh, if you multiply the two slopes together, right, slope A times slope B, you get negative 1, which is exactly what would happen if you multiplied opposite reciprocals together. Here's some examples of opposite reciprocals. 3 fourths and negative 4 thirds. If I multiply that together, I'm going to get negative 1. Right, so getting negative 1, you multiply them together, is a test of whether they're opposite reciprocal slopes. And neither would be not the same and not opposite reciprocals, just neither. Okay? So we need to find the slope of each of these. We just found two slopes in two previous problems. Uh, we'll take for A, for line A, negative 1 minus 4 over negative 5 minus negative 3 or 4 minus negative 1 over negative 3 minus negative 5. It's all going to come out the same. Negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. And negative 5 minus negative 3 is negative 2. So 5 halves. Um, because they're both negative, and negative divided by negative is positive. Uh, for b, we'll take negative 7 minus negative 5 over 7 minus 2. Uh, negative 7 minus negative 5 is uh, negative 2. Negative 7 plus 5 is negative 2. And 7 minus 2 is 5. If we were to multiply these together, 5 halves times negative 2 fifths, we'd get negative 10 over 10, and that would be negative 1. And so that's just a test to show that they are opposite reciprocals, so they're perpendicular. I just realized, I, t I said at the beginning of this problem that I would do both. Um, a and B. So um, in the, the other one, it was not an amount of water. It was a distance traveled by a car, and it was Felicia and not Denzel. And, um, but the graph is exactly the same, it turns out. My test software picks the graph randomly, and it happened to pick the same looking graph for both. So in that, right, in version B, it would be more like uh, Felicia was driving forward in some way, driving forward. Right, her distance was increasing over time. Then she slowed way down. I like the way that people said these stories. They said something like, I uh, hit a school zone, or there was an accident ahead, or something like that. Then stopped. She stopped driving. Right, and then she went back. Right, she drove backward. She turned around and headed back home. Some people said because there was this accident, they decided to go back uh, the way they came. All those are good explanations. I liked all those stories. Um, and then I wanted to see here, um, right, if we're looking at version B, that you said something like where she wound up is close to the, where she started. Uh, maybe she left home, and she got to work, and was at work, and then drove back home. That's a perfectly good story. Um, her distance didn't change a lot. It, it increased just a little bit if you want to be technical, but also it looks like maybe it just was pretty much the same. Maybe she just went back where she started, or she forgot her phone, or all those stories were good. Those were all good. Um, solve this equation, we got variables on both sides, so we want to make it so that we don't have variables on both sides. So how about if we add 8x to both sides? I do that because when I add 8x to 3, negative 3x, I get positive x value. I like that. So 7 is all that's left on this side. We get negative 3x plus 8x is 5x plus 19. Uh, we'll subtract 5x from both sides. Or no, we, we have the x's all collected in one place. So how about if we subtract the 19 from both sides? Subtract 19. 7 minus 19 is negative 12. And we divide by 5 on both sides. So x is equal to negative 12 over 5. All right, here we're going to get x by itself. We want to get 1 times x on one side equals whatever. It doesn't matter what this stuff is. Um, so how do we get a 1x? 
We have a 12 sevenths x, how do we get a 1x? We multiply by the reciprocal. Multiply by the reciprocal on both sides. So what we get on this side is, um, let's see, 72, 84, okay? 84 over 84 times x. And on this side we get 7 twelfths times a. So this is just 84 over 84, that's one, right? One x, we don't even need to write one, it's just one times x is x. So 7 twelfths times a, that's what x is. Um, okay, here, uh, you know, we had almost the exact same question, uh, just with different numbers, on quest number two, when this was a quiz question. Now it's a test question, and we're gonna approach it in very much the same way, okay? If I went to this first place and I rented a bunch of videos, let's say I rented one video, well, it would cost me 40 plus a dollar 43. If I rented two videos, it'd be 40 plus whatever two times 143 was, right? Because if you bring it up, you two times 143, 143 is the cost of one video, so you multiply by two, add them together. For any number of videos, X videos, 40 plus 143 times the number of videos is giving you the cost of that many videos from that store that costs $40 to join. On the other hand, the other store that costs no money to join but 315 a video, Right, it's going to cost 315 for one video, 315 times two for two videos, and 315 times x for x videos. And we set them up to be equal because this one is not as good a deal for just one or two or three videos, right? And this one is a, a better deal for one or two or three videos. But this one's a much better deal for like 100 videos, right? If we rented 100 videos, we would not want to go to this store that cost $315, whereas this would cost well, significantly less. I don't have that off the top of my head. But at some point, they will be exactly the same, assuming I can rent a decimal of a video. And then after that point, this becomes the better deal. At first, this is the better deal, better deal, better deal, better deal, then the exact same deal, and then this one's a better deal. Right? So we'll find that equal point, and we'll go a little bit past it, so that we'll be able to say that this is a better deal. So to solve this equation, we'll subtract 143x from both sides. That's 40 equals 315 minus 143, 172, that's 1.72x. So we'll divide by 1.72x, not x. 1.72, just 1.72, because 1.72 divided by 1.72 is one, and now we have one x on this side. So 40 divided by that answer we got 23.25. Okay, so x is equal to, let's say equal to, even though they're not exactly equal, 23.26. So if I were to rent 23.26 videos, then this guy here, this, this club here would cost the exact same amount as this club here. But you can't rent 23.26 videos, and we don't want them to be equal, we want this to be a better deal. So we need to rent more than 23.26 videos, and the next number that makes sense after 23.26 is 24. Let me make sure that that was the bottom of that page, it was, here we go, first one on this next page. Solve this equation first, I just have to distribute, I just can't resist. So I'm gonna distribute, oh, and at the same time, I'm going to subtract 4x from 13x, so that's going to be 9x. Just combining like terms there on that side, cleaning it up. Careful, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Somebody got plus 2 there, it should be minus 2. 9x, let's see, uh, 9x plus 3 equals 3 minus 6x minus 2. Maybe I want to combine these like terms here and get 1 minus 6x on this side. So we have 9x plus 3 equals 1 minus 6x. Right? Now we don't want variables on both sides, we only want variables on one side. So I'll add 6x to both sides, canceling the 6x on this side, the negative 6x on this side. And so I'm to 15x plus 3 equals 1. Then I'll subtract 3 from both sides. 15x equals negative 2 divided by 5, and not 5, 15. And x is equal to negative 2 fifteenths. Negative 2 fifteenths. 
All right, solving for x just means we're going to get x by itself, but x is inside this parentheses. This parentheses is being multiplied by a negative 4, so it'll probably be, probably be easiest to distribute this negative 4. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. Negative 4 times x is a negative 4x. All right, how is, so we have this x term here. we got some stuff subtracted from it, some stuff added to it, so we'll subtract c. We'll add 12. c minus c is 0. Negative 12 plus 12 is 0. We'll subtract c and add 12 on the other side. Negative 4x equals h minus c plus 12. We'll divide by negative 4. And x is equal to h minus c plus 12 over negative 4. All right, so all that stuff all together, uh, doing that would be equivalent to x. Uh, I solve this for p. So this is even a little bit easier, I think, than this last one. We have a p term plus some stuff equals 60. So let's just get rid of that extra stuff by subtracting it. Right? 9p plus 5m minus 5m. Let's look at it in the number line. Here's 9p right here. Okay, I don't know where it is in relation to, to 0. Even it could be a, a positive or a negative number. But if I add 5m, add 5m, here I am at 9p plus 5m. And then if I take it from there and subtract 5m, well, it just leaves me at 9p. 9p is all that's left on the left side. And we're equal to 60 minus 5m. And we'll divide by 9. Just like we would, no matter what it was that 9p was equal to, if 9p was equal to 81, we divide by 9. If 9p was equal to 173, we divide by 9. And we're going to divide by 9 here. p is equal to 60 minus 5m. 5m over 9. Was that it? That was it. That was the last one. Um, well, again, thank you for watching. I hope that was helpful. If you need any extra help, absolutely stop by and ask me any questions you have. Thanks for watching.